Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to CIU 10's online instruction series. This session is going to focus on Google Classroom and organizing Google Classroom specifically. My name is Mike Baker. Renee is also here with us today, and she'll be helping to moderate the chat. Although we do have a pretty small group this afternoon, so I, I think that it's fine if you want to use your microphone to ask questions, feel free to interrupt. There's just 10 of us here, so I think the audio will work just fine. I do want to make you aware of some schedule changes. As I mentioned, some of you maybe were not in the room yet. Originally, the Google Classroom that we're starting right now was to be at 2.15 today, but I do have something I need to go take care of. I'm actually helping my local district monitor uh, Chromebook pickups for kids who didn't take their devices with them a couple of weeks ago. So I volunteered to help. <clears throat> Hopefully I do not contract some kind of uh, part of the coronavirus thing while I'm out. Um, but that schedule change has happened. And also we have changed uh, tomorrow and Thursday. We moved one of the, the Thursday sessions topics to Wednesday and moved the Wednesday to Thursday. So please check that website, that mini page that we have for our uh, schedule to see those changes. Okay. So um, I'm not going to worry that your microphones are muted, but you can certainly turn those back on at any time. Your cameras are fine as well. In this small group, I don't expect any kind of problems with audio or video. The recorded version of this workshop will be available sometime this evening, so you can come back and rewatch it. I'll also post the slides, although there aren't many slides for this one, just a handful. Tomorrow's sessions are going to look at Google Classroom uh, grading features and rubrics and how to provide feedback to students. And then also we'll be doing a session on engagement tomorrow. So make sure you check out all of our offerings again on that little mini site. Please note that we do have a hard stop time today. So we have to be in the next session at 2.15. That is a separate code and a separate meeting room. So we have to pop out of this in advance of 2.15. We will have time. I expect to have at least 10 minutes for questions and answers at the end of this. One last thing, if you have yet to do so, please hover over your name in that participant window and use the menu to change your name and add your school district or uh, organization affiliation after your name. That helps us figure out where you're from and also helps us when we print out our roster from today. Finally, if, we if you have questions after the session that I didn't answer, please send me an email to mbaker at ciu10.org. So we have one learning target for today, and that is to look at the different ways that we can organize the Google Classroom stream, the amount of information that comes from Classroom. So um, before we do that, I would like to get an idea of how you're currently using Classroom. So I'm going to launch a poll using Zoom and it should show up on your screen. You should see a notification there that it's asking you to answer the questions. There are just three questions. And the third question you can answer more than one way. So I'll give you about a minute to respond. Now the, the session is going to be recorded at the end. Uh, but your computer may allow you to record this. So if, if you want a, a local copy, you can by all means hit record. But we are recording it. It will be on the website. So I can see two people have voted. Now five of you have voted. So I'll give you about another 30 seconds. about 15 seconds to vote. Okay, I'm going to stop the voting now and I'll show you the results in a moment. And I will show you, you can't see my window, but I will show you here at the end what is going to happen. Uh, yes, the icebreaker session, Jess, is at 2.15. Uh, we had a flip-flop because of a commitment I have this afternoon. All right, so let me show you the results here. So you should now be seeing the results. If you can see the results, 
please use that yes button, which is found at the bottom of the participant window, just so I know you can see it. Excellent, I see those yeses coming in. So take a look at our demographics here. Uh, almost half of you have not used Google Classroom before. Some of you have used it on a monthly basis and a couple are using it on a, on a daily basis. So most of you don't have a whole lot of experience mm -hmm. with it. Um, one of the things I'll look at today is Classroom's topic feature. So uh, five of you said the what now? And uh, so <laughs> there is a way to organize things using topics, which is how we'll start today. And then I ask you to tell me what you most want to learn about. And overwhelmingly, it was how to get that class stream organized so it makes some sense. And then we have a three-way tie for scheduling things. So I'll actually cover all of these topics, uh, but we're starting out with customizing that, that stream. So that's fantastic. So let me pop out of my presentation and take you into a class. So at this point, you should be seeing a Google class on the screen. Please give me a thumbs up if you can see this class. Again, that will be under the more button in your formative assessment buttons, okay? Good, good, I see lots of thumbs going up so you can see Classroom. All right, so since half of you are new to Classroom and haven't done much with it, I do wanna give you a very quick tour. It basically has four pages. What we're looking at right now is what is called the stream. The stream is everything that you have done in your class. So any announcements that you've made, any assignments that are coming up, this is where the students and you as the teacher can see everything that's coming. So it is a quite literally a stream of information. The classwork page, the students have this as well. And this is where you as the teacher can create different kinds of assignments, including quizzes, you can ask questions, you can post materials. And there's that topic feature, which we'll look at in a moment. So this basically shows you all of the things that could potentially be graded. Now, you don't have to grade everything. It is possible to make assignments that have no grade value, right? And as we look at what we're doing as far as, um, you know, what education is going to look like, there may be a, a period of time where we're not grading things. So you can make the assignments ungraded for sure. The people tab shows the teachers and students. I don't have any students in this classroom. Won't hurt us for this demonstration today. And I can also add co-teachers. So a co-teacher has the exact same rights as the teacher with one big exception. The co-teacher cannot delete the class. So, but they have all the rights to make assignments. They can communicate with students. They can look at work. Uh, so if you're in a co-teaching model, this will give your co-teacher complete access to your classroom. Again, with the exception of being able to delete things, the last tab, grades, is empty, of course. I don't have students and I don't have any assignments to grade, but this is where a grade book grid will show up and it allows you to grade and then return grades to students. Google is working on integration with different gradebook platforms. So I know they already have one for Skyward. Um, I think they're working on Sapphire, which I know a lot of our districts use. So the hope is that maybe by the time we come back, uh, from this school year that uh, those integration pieces will be there and you'll be able to push grades right through here into your gradebook so you don't have to double enter things, which would be good because we don't yeah. like doing twice the work. So let's take a look here. Uh, using your chat window, could you tell me based on what these assignments are titled, what you think I may be uh, working on as far as topics? So give me some ideas using chat. What are some of the topics that I might be teaching? Or you can use your microphone since we again have a fairly small crowd. Okay, yeah, I see poetry, writing is kind of uh, yeah, the broad overarching umbrella here. I see poetry again. So even Craig Fink says poetry. He loves, <laughs> he loves poetry. So yeah, absolutely. It looks like I have a couple of assignments here that have to do with poetry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a topic and I'm going to call that topic poetry. And what will happen now is you can see, oh, I have 
a header here that says poetry. But everything is listed up here. It's, it's not in a topic right now. So what I need to do is I need to move those poetry topics down into that topic area. So I'm going to grab meter and I'm going to drag it down and you can see the shading. Hopefully the animation is working correctly and I can drop that in there. So I'll just take rhyme and I'll take the sonnet. And do these look like poetry using your yes or no buttons? Should these go to the top three categories uh, assignment? Should they go to poetry? You can use yes or no to tell me if you think they're poems. Right. These are not poetry. These are kind of looks like essays. Okay? Or maybe I just want to broadly call it prose. So I'm going to come up here and create a topic. And now I can grab these and move those down inside. Now, you can also organize things within these categories. So these, these topics, so if I said, oh, um, let's see, I wanna start with narratives. I can drag narratives up in the list. So it's just that easy to reorganize things once they are in the topics. Okay, any questions there? Pause for a moment and wait, look at chat or you can chime in. I'm sure one of the questions you, you have is, okay, well now that I've done that, what happens when I have 100 assignments midway through the year or more? So these topics also come into play over here. I see an area where I can see all the topics, which is highlighted now, and then I can see prose and poetry. So what will happen when I click those buttons, it will filter out the assignments and only show me the things that fall into those topics. Uh, Jennifer's asking about the yes or no to answer. That is in your participant window. So if you look in that black Zoom toolbar, you should see a participants button and those will be located at the bottom of the participant window. I will tell you that there are some versions that of Zoom that may not show those. So for the uh, iPads and things like that may not have all those features. Okay, so but that's, that's where they are. And oh good, you have them in behind the more button is where you'll find things like a coffee break and applause and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I am seeing a private chat message from Janet. I'm going to answer, answer publicly because she's trying to get out of private chat. To get out of the <laughs> private chat, click where it says to at the bottom of the chat window and change it to everyone. And that will bump you out of it. And, and by the way, everyone, it may bump you back into private. If you send a private chat message, it will often remember that and it's waiting for you to reply or waiting for a response. It does that so you don't accidentally send a private message to the entire group. So that's what the default is. So in my screen, Janet, because you sent me a private chat message asking how to get out, mine actually says to Janet right now because it knows I have yet to, to respond. So that's just so you don't do that embarrassing thing like, boy, Mike is a real idiot and send it to yeah. everyone. <laughs> I'm, I'm um, in your class a second time because I got to get this. <laughs> I have to understand how to do this. And so uh, anyway, thank you. Yes, and we're, and we're, I'm doing quite a bit with classroom and any extra help you need, just uh, let any of us know. That's, that's why we're here for sure. Yeah, so, there's, a, there's a private one just about rosters that I just cannot seem to get an answer on. I don't know when the appropriate time is it that I ask you that. We should have some time at the end of this. All right, I will so, hang on. Then. Okay, Thank yeah, let's, uh, as they say, we'll put a pin on that, a pin in that, and we'll come back, okay? okay? All, All right. right, so do these pros, um, they make sense, they, the topics, I hope. So what we're going to do now is what happens when I make a new assignment? Do I need to continually drag these things around and put them in the correct topic? So let's find out what happens. So I'm going back here to classwork. I, I have to make sure I want to, let me point this out. If you switch to one of your topics, 
notice that the new assignment button, the plus sign goes away. It will only be visible, the create button, when you're in all topics. So if you've lost that button, don't panic. It's because in the filtered view by topic, you don't have the ability to create. So let me create a new assignment. And I'm going to do one. On Emily Dickinson, I'm going to tell my students to read and annotate the attached poem. And I'm going to attach this using the add button. And I already have it in Google Drive. I highly recommend any attachment that you're going to give to a student, put it in Google Drive first. What that will do is it will unlock all of the features of Classroom that will help you share things in specific ways. I'm going to show you in one second what I mean. So here is one of Emily's poems. I'm going to add that. And because I added it from Drive, I have an option here and it's asking me, what can my students actually do with the file? Well, I asked them to read and annotate. So students can view file. Is that the right permission to give them using your yes or no buttons? So if I want them to annotate, do I pick can view? Some votes are, are coming in now. Oh, it's a, a pretty, pretty well split between yes or no. Well, if they can view the file, they cannot, they can certainly read, but annotating would mean they have to put notes on in some way. So if they can only view, they can't do that. So the answer to that would be no, I, I, that won't work for this assignment. Look at the last two. What do you think the difference is here? Students can edit the file. Well, that sounds kind of good. I want them to annotate. But then it says, make a copy for each student. Does anyone know what the difference is between those two? And you can unmute yourself if you'd like to take a guess. When you make a copy for each student, that means it's going to make a copy of that document in their drive. Correct. So what happens with that one, each, each student gets his or her own copy. If we choose the middle one, they are all editing the same document at the same time. So you could literally have, if you had 100 kids you teach through the day as a, a secondary teacher, and you said students can edit the file, all 100 could be in that exact file at the same time, making hundreds of changes. So we usually use this bake a copy. Now, it, are there times where you might say, give them all access to the same document? Sure, maybe you just have a simple document, uh, place a resource you found into this document, and then they could paste it. Something like that would be okay. Uh, but for the most part, they're turning in their work, so we want to make a copy for each of the students. So coming back to this idea of topic, <laughs> on the side over here, I can choose a topic, and I've already created poetry and prose. So I'm going to stick this in poetry. And now I don't have to drag it when I go back to my classwork page. It's already going to be in the poetry topic. While we're in here, I do wanna show you a couple other little tricks. So I'm going to uh, give you a, a bonus here that I would normally circle back at the end, but we'll do it while we're here because I think it just makes sense. You can assign a due date. So right now it has no due date. Students could turn it in at any time. It won't be marked late. Uh, it won't appear anywhere as something that is due at a specific time. But if I click here and assign this and say that it is due tomorrow, and I can even give it a time. So maybe uh, it always defaults to 1159, which means basically turn it in by midnight. So let's leave that. So I can see that it is due Thursday, March 26th at 1159. One other thing that's kind of cool up here in this four section, you can assign the assignment to multiple classrooms. So if you have a classroom page for, let's say you're a secondary teacher might have four sections of chemistry. So you have a classroom page for each of them. You can just click here and add it to those other periods. 
the other section. So you don't have to do four times the work. You just do it once mm. and put it into those classes. The other cool thing that I, I can't show you because I don't have students, but by default, all students are going to get the assignment. However, once my students are in the class, this list will populate and I can give certain assignments to certain people. So if you're looking to differentiate, you can assign different activities to different students. The students will not know the difference. They don't see that other people aren't on that. So you're not going to get the questions that say like, why do I have a different assignment? Or why did you give me this one and the other person doesn't have that assignment? So they won't see it, that's for you. So you can differentiate that way. Let's assign this and make sure that it goes into poetry. Always takes it a couple seconds to process the assignment. And there it is. Down here under poetry, if I click that will expand. I can clearly see it is due that date. There's the attachment. Here are my directions. So let me go back here. Let's take a look at the stream. Oh, hmm. Well, as a student, I, I can see that I have an assignment, an Emily Dickinson assignment, but I really can't tell what the details of, of that assignment are. And if I click it, oh, look, look what it does. It opened a whole new page. I have to go to instruction. Uh, that's not real convenient, All right? So let's go back here to our stream. Again, this is the first tab, the stream. I want to be able to let my students see a little more detail so they don't have to click on all these assignments. So to do that, we head up here to the gear. This will bring up the details for the class. So this is where you can go to change the name of the course and things like that. But right here under the general settings, I can decide two really important things. One, do I want my students to be able to make comments or posts in the stream? So they could do a discussion right in the class stream. If you're worried about what your students may write, you can say only teachers can post. If you want them to reply, but only to you, not to each other, or to create new posts, you can say students can only comment. Let me correct something. They would be able to, they can only comment to you simply because only the teacher is able to post in that model. Okay, so here the students cannot post, they can only comment, and here it's just you. So no one can give you any kind of feedback. The thing that I'm interested in is changing the look of the stream. So right now it's condensed. I want to show all the attachments and details. Watch what my stream looks like now. Let's take a look. And all of a sudden, all of the assignments on the stream are expanded and I can see whether they have an attachment and I can see the directions. Does that make sense to you? Do you see the difference? Give me a, some kind of feedback, either a yes or a thumbs up. Yes. Good. Okay. Now there was another option. Let me hit that gear and go back to this. Wonder what this does. Hide the notifications. Well, what that's going to do is something kind of interesting. It looks like everything left. It's all gone. I can just make a comment here. So I could say, hello class. Again, notice you can send this to other courses as well. So this is going to show up in the stream, but where am I going to get my work? Where are my assignments now? In the classwork. So they're in classwork. So the assignments will always be in the classwork tab. But if you want your stream just to be announcements from you, you would go to the gear. Somebody asked to see this again. You would go to the gear in the general section and you're going to change how the classwork looks on the stream. So you're either going to see full details, a condensed version, which is just the title, and a due date if there is one, or you can completely hide it from the stream so the stream is only your commentary. And then you hit save. So if you like to use announcements and discussions on your stream, some teachers like to turn off the assignments and make the students go into classwork 
to see the assignment. Okay. Well, there's two other little organizational things that I want to show you while we're here mm -hmm. on the classwork page. And one is the class calendar, which says Google Calendar here. And when I click on this, what you'll notice is I have all my calendars. I have them turned off right now so it doesn't confuse us. But I have this literature PM calendar turned on. So when did I give them that assignment? I gave them the Emily Dickinson assignment. And oh, it's way down here. Let me change, let me move this so you can see it a little better. But here's that assignment that I gave my students that I said it had to be due by 1159. So every assignment that I make, if I give it a due date, it goes to the class calendar. So yes, I can see that as a teacher, but I probably, hopefully, I already remembered that the assignment was due because I'm the one that assigned it. But the students can actually subscribe to this calendar. So for a student, they can simply go to the classwork page, hit the Google Calendar button, and then once they get to the calendar, they can subscribe to it, which would add it to their calendar. Our students do not use the devices the way we use devices. They like to take selfies. They like to use filters. They like to have lots of fun like that. If they would learn to use the calendar, they probably remember a lot more of the deadlines that we give them. So that's a good way for them to subscribe. One last thing to show you here is this button, which is the class drive folder. Again, this is another organizational thing. Mine's going to probably be empty right now because no one has turned in any work. But you can see this is made automatically for me. Every classroom, I'll show you in one second, has a folder. So literature PM, and then this is the assignment that I gave. If I open it, there's nothing in here now. But once the students start to turn things in, I can see their documents here as well. If I click on classroom, you can see these are all of my classes that I've made over the last year and a half. Most of them are inactive, but these are the folders that store all of the student work that gets turned in. So you will see in your drive a classroom folder. Do not delete that folder. If you see it and you say, oh, I didn't make that, that's classroom. That's automatically generated. If you delete it, you will lose the stuff that is in your class. And you don't want that to happen. That will make you cry. And we don't want people to cry. One final little trick here. Let me go back to make a new assignment. And I'm not going to fill in all these details, but what I want to show you is hiding behind this assign button is this little arrow. And you can actually schedule when you want the assignments to show up. So if you're planning ahead, and this assignment is homework for over the weekend, you may want that to show up at 9 a.m. on Friday. So by clicking schedule, here is the assignment I just made, and it's telling me here that on March 27th at 9 a.m., this assignment will magically appear in the stream and in the classwork page. I'll get an email that tells me that it posted. So if you're someone who likes to plan in advance, you can easily schedule weeks and months of assignments ahead of time, and then they'll just show up when you need them to. So you don't have to overwhelm the students with all of these assignments at once. They can appear as they are needed. With that, I've covered everything that I had on my list, and I, I hope it wasn't too much. These were all strategies to organize and kind of tame this stream and how it works. So I will open it up now for questions, and if you need to see something again, or if you have some other questions about Classroom, I can certainly answer those. We have lots of time, about 10 minutes for questions. So Mike? You can, yes. I do have a question. All right. How, it doesn't really have to do with what you just went over, but I rarely use this. I teach kindergarten, so assigning stuff's not something we really do. <laughs> gotcha. um, 
But where do, I, obviously I'm gonna probably have to be doing something with this. So where do I find my class code to give the kids to join? Yeah, great question. So the class code is created automatically and uh, we do have some ability to, to tweak it a little bit, but it's okay. always here in the stream and it's really tiny right now. It's hiding right oh, here. Oh, okay. But, but what you can do, this is a really cool thing. Google started to realize, and it's, it will work perfectly with Zoom as well. They realized everybody had large pro, you know, projection screens, displays in their room, and they like, you know, oh, well, you have a display, just hit this button, and you get a really big version of the code. Uh, okay. So what you could do uh, using, if you're using Zoom, or if you use Google Hangouts, whatever you do for your video conferencing, you could just bring this page up, and then, um, you know, with young ones, their parents would obviously be helping them. But right. they would go to classroom.google.com and just click the plus sign and then enter this code to join. And in fact, okay. I can make it even more obnoxiously huge here. <laughs> okay, so you said classroom.google.com. Yes, that's where and they that's would how go they'll to get on and join. That's how they would join, yes. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, in fact, I can probably show you that. So I'm back now on my, these are all my classes. They will have the same exact plus sign right here. Obviously, okay. they can't create, but they can join, and then you can enter the code. Now, Good. you can also invite students in. If you go to people and then click the plus sign, you can enter email addresses. The issue with that is, especially with little ones, their email is probably not active. Um, right. If you send it to parents, the parents can't join because they wouldn't have the right kind of email address. Sure. So your best bet is to use the code because then anybody can join. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Mike, did you see Elizabeth ask, can you create assignments under a specific topic or do you have to create it first and then move it to that topic? Great question. So I, I was not paying attention when I made this one. So here's Mike's assignment. The topic is right here. So you can, I could add it to either of these or I can even create a new topic here. Oh, nice. And show it. So you can do it anywhere. And, it, and if you forget to do that, it is as simple as coming over and saying create topic, and it, I'll just call it new topic two. So if you forget or you put it in the wrong topic, it's as simple as just grabbing it and putting it in the right place. And another question, how can they organize into topics all the previous assignments that they've already done? So two ways you can, uh, the best, probably the best way is what I just did is to create the topics that you need, and then just drag the things around. I have a question. Yes. I have been, um, I've been using this for the past couple days. We're trying to get our kids online and using this. And I had created an assignment and I, I uh, cre attached like um, a Google Doc to it that I wanted them to use. So like if you go under like the assignment tab and then it says you can create and then I created a document to, for them to use. Okay. A lot of them were turning in the document blank and then going out and getting another Google Doc to turn it in. Yeah. Is there a way, <clears throat> do you know what I mean? Like I don't know how, to, how so what, it looks to them when what, they get what, it. what grade are you working with? Uh, this was eighth grade what okay. that happened with. So I had this happen with high school students. So what they do, and it's one of those things where you, you kind of have to condition them. It's almost like a class routine. And uh, of mm -hmm. course, that will be hard doing this because we're just flipping the switch and moving to an online instruction. But mm -hmm. um, what they have to do, and unfortunately, I can't really demonstrate it for you, but this is typically what the students will see. Let me get that Emily Dickinson one. So what they should be doing is they should click here to open that document that gives them their own copy, which will actually append their name here. So mine would have said Mike Baker dash because I could not stop for death. Okay. Okay. Um, but what the students typically do is they do this. They will go um, make a new document. So if you said write an essay, yep. they'll fire up a blank document. And then what they do is they're not turning it in. So if you provide them with a blank template to use, they're making their own and then they're somehow turning in the one that you made instead of the one that they did. They can add multiple right. attachments. Again, I, I can't show you because I'm not a student, 
but um, you can add multiple attachments. I, my high school students did that all the time. I would tell them, just click on the document I gave you and it's yours. You can, you can type, um, you know, and then they just hit turn it in. But what most of them do is make a fresh document and then they forget to attach it. So you end up with a blank. Okay. So there's, so there's no way for us to attach like the document that they sent us that we got in our mail to the assignment itself. We just have to look at it and then put the grade in ourselves. You, you, if they're emailing it to you, they still have the rights to it. So what they would do is, is they would just go back in the classroom, open that assignment and attach that correct document to it. Okay. 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 Now, if you're saying you're getting, if the students are getting a message that says the, the document is locked because you turned it in, then that means they did turn something in, but they may have inadvertently deleted the content from it. And if that's the case, you want to look under the file menu and look at the revision history and see if there's a version of the document that has the text. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all new to, to us and to them. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, if you said, hey, take five selfies and turn them in, you'd get five amazing things. <laughs> uh, if you tell them, let's write an essay, you know, the, the precision is not there for that. Uh, and I have two, okay. uh, they've both graduated from high school, but I have two teenagers and they're, yeah, they, they know how to do really <laughs> fun things and play games and talk to their friends, but they don't really know how to make a document. Mike, Janet asked how she, can, how she can expose all of her art classes to the assignment. She doesn't have their emails. So how would she go about doing that? I would recommend in that case, using a not classroom but using google sites and you can use build a website very quickly in fact that's my topic on thursday if you have a chance to attend that i'll be doing that both morning and afternoon and sites allows you to add the media right to the page instead of making it click on the assignment and then look at the attachment um, and that way that site link can just be shared with the teachers so you can have all of those students which is an itinerant you're moving among the buildings they can all just go to that link and you just create the site once. And we can embed, by the way, other activities inside of that. So if you wanted to ask them questions about some of the art that you're displaying on the page, you can actually embed a Google form and they can answer questions right there. Quick question then for, yes. kinder, for kindergarten again, since okay. we've never done this. How, how are they uploading assignments that I give them? Like if I ask them to write, you know, five sentences about what they like to do in spring and they do that, how are they uploading that? So you would need to make an assignment for them. So they right. have a place to turn it in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then they can do, um, you know, if they're doing it electronically or if they're, they're writing and then maybe mom and dad are helping them take a picture of it. But okay. basically anything that you could do with an email attachment, you know, be it a document, a picture, a PDF, it, it just okay. gets basically attached to the assignment. So mom and dad would more than likely have to help them, you know, okay. find the assignment and then they would see a button to turn in their work. And then okay. So if they whatever take a attachment. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And, and in fact, there is a Google, Google makes the classroom app for mobile devices so it can be installed on an iPhone oh, or an Android okay. phone or an iPad or an Android tablet. And then that means the camera is built right into the device. Right. So you can have them, you know, write on that kind of larger lined paper that you would use in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And they can, they can go right in. The mom and dad can open the assignment, click a button to access the camera, take a picture and turn it right in using their phone. It's super, awesome. super easy. And in fact, and I, I hadn't planned to cover this, but maybe as this stretches over the weeks, I'll do that. There is even a way for us to annotate on what they've turned into us. So okay. we can actually open it in some ways and kind of draw on it and give them some feedback and turn it back to them with that. Nice. Okay. So with this thought, can we have, is there a whiteboard scenario that we can use? There is a, so there's a whiteboard built into, um, into Zoom, but it may not do what you want it to do. So I will, I'm, now I only have about two minutes to show you this. So bear with me because I'm going to have to jump out because we need to start um, our next session here. But 
Google has something called Jamboard, J-A-M-B-O-A-R-D. It's, they make a hardware product, but you don't need it. It's basically a big interactive display. But if I made a new jam, so I hit this plus button, and then I'm going to share this. I can get the link right here and put it in my classroom, or I could just invite, you know, I could invite Renee. Renee, don't feel like you need to do this because we have to move to our next session, but I'll just send this invite. Oh, well, there's an error right now. But I, what think would Renee, I think Renee left. Well, that might, maybe that's the, no, that, that's not the, that's not the error. Hi, Diane. So, Hi. so what this would do, this is a collaborative whiteboard. Right. So you can share here and share with the students email addresses, or like I said, just put that link in classroom and then you can't, everybody could be in here and they could be annotating a document. And so if they had a tablet or an iPad, they could use that, take they, a picture of it and send it in yes, for you they, yep, to make they it would, easier for the kindergarten through whatever grade that's going to be needing that, correct? Well, they could, they could draw on this and then I don't know that it's going to let them save it here, okay. but they would simply give you the link to what they made and they could turn okay. that in. So it would be just the link. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Well, we have to move on. Uh, Renee split out of here because she's <laughs> setting up her, her next one. So the recording of this, it will be a little bit later this evening or maybe even tomorrow morning until this shows up. But I, I thank you all for, for joining. Um, if you enjoyed today's session, how about giving us a thumbs up so we know. And uh, many of you, I'm sure, are going to, to join us in the next session here momentarily. So have thank a fantastic so much, Mike. day, everyone. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Uh, you were a great group with great questions, and uh, please remember the entire IU is here for you in our curriculum department, or as Diane says, our small but mighty t uh, team of three. <laughs> we are absolutely here for you, and just send any one of us an email, and we'll, we'll respond awesome. quickly. So be thinking about how we're going to do STEM. So Very step, carefully. Yeah. Sorry, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, oh, where are my kids and get their materials? So... Yeah, but, um, but you know, Nadine, I do. We're already working on that. I envision uh, there are online tools that, right. that we can definitely use. So it won't be like the maker type uh, mindset. But this is, I'm, I'm Pollyanna. This is an amazing opportunity for parents and kids to come together too. Absolutely. You know uh, see, I, mean? I, I agree with you. I think this is like yeah. building our families and connections. But yep. I just, I just want to make sure my kids are still going through that process. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I'm going Maybe to have to end this. I have to end this meeting, unfortunately, right. well, to, right. to help Renee. So uh, we'll see everybody later. And thanks again. All Take right. care. Thanks, guys.